Yes, this is a project I've been working on. It's functional enough to share now. It's not finished and it probably never will be. And I'm not even sure what to call it. It's a solar weed exterminator or autonomous Arduino weed hunter killer robot. I don't know, it's a mouthful and sounds like Skynet. But what it is, it helps me burn the weeds out of my limestone patio. Okay. Before I get into how I did it, this is what it does. Well, what I have a Fresno lens here, and there's also a switch on the bottom of this cart. So it's lightweight switch, and so when the grass hits it, that's enough to trigger it. It can, then it keeps advancing backwards until hopefully the area that it triggered it is now under the concentrated light, and the Fresno burns it out. It's uh, it's on a loop right now. So what it does, it just burns five or six times, and then it advances way ahead, and then repeats itself. Now what makes it take a little different path? You see that little black bar on the right hand side that that's actually a shade and there's two photodiodes there so it keeps it, it those things keep the whole cart aligned with the sun so it kind of moves a little bit as the sun moves around because it's always pointed towards the sun that way i get good i guess i know where the concentrated light is going to be then too so uh it's set up to burn 30 seconds at a time I thought uh, that's going to save me some battery life then too, and it kind of does a good job burning. And then, then like I said, it advances way ahead then too. Now there is a photovoltaic on the back there too, but that's just kind of a battery extender. I get about four hours, maybe a little bit more run time with this, and just the photovoltaic itself, that is enough to run the electronics, but not enough to really power the thing, of course. You need a lot more... Um, power to move motors in too so but uh, the batteries are rechargeable uh, actually I have a solar uh, setup in my garage and so I just charge them off the solar panels I have out there and uh, it works quite fine then too so yeah see so it just turned a little bit well that turning is to make sure it's actually oriented toward the sun now it's been about three days since I've just been screwing around with this and that jungle to the behind the cart, well that's what it used to look like even on the right hand side. So it's it's been doing a pretty good job working its way through but like I said I've been spending more time just rewriting the code and um, getting this thing to work right. There is an LCD on there that's just used for my own diagnostics. Um, it tells me the, if the button's been pushed and what it's doing, how, how much is it looped then too. And actually the output of the LC or the output of the photodiodes in too. So uh, it really only works the best between like say 11 and 2 o'clock when the sun's up in the air uh, pretty high. I can adjust the Fresno. That's just kind of friction fit on there. And I'll raise it up and down if necessary then too. So this is shot kind of early, um, a little bit earlier too because that's why the lens is not up so high. But um, it's been working great. Um, it needs some additional work. Okay, there it is. It's just advancing now. Now it's going to back until it hits the switch. Hits, the switch got hit there. And it's going to rest and um, burn this area out then too. So uh, it, it needs some additional work. I need some bumpers on it so it tells so it can, knows when it hits the retaining wall. I got a little a limestone retaining walls on both sides. Uh, that's gonna that would be be a better coverage area. And I probably need a fire system so it can determine if I have flame or not and back away so it doesn't get burned up. But uh, future development uh, too. So so this is the photo diode. That's the DigiKey part number. Uh, these things work really good inside and they work really good in full sunlight outside too. So um, and what I did, I found this particular circuit on the outside science DIY, okay, measuring light with the photodiode. In fact, this LTC 1050, that's a single one. It just does one channel. Um, of course, I need more than one channel. And so what I did, I put together a quad system uh, that actually uses the LTC 1053. This has got four built right into it. And I, I did not post this artwork to GitHub, but I can if anybody really wants it then too, because I do need two for this, but I was using three for a while because I used another one on the bottom. I was trying to come up with a break the beam sensor instead of a switch, but I just could not get that to work accurately then too. So this is the finished board then too. I just got it screwed to the board down here too to uh, have it work then too. But it's been, it's really been rock solid. I'm really happy how this thing works. I have a much bigger system I'm using this for, for uh, correcting a, a very large array then too. So this is just sort of a test piece to, to get this thing working here too. So 
But um, again, um, the whole thing is powered by a small little Arduino clone. And like I said, the LCD is back there, but it's not really necessary. I might remove it because it, it gets kind of uh, warm in the sunlight, but uh, it's just for troubleshooting right now. Uh, there's my little uh, photodiode there on the right hand side. Now there's a hole there too. I used some cadmium sulfide uh, sensors earlier. I did not like their responsiveness, so I stopped using that. And the, this system with this uh, photodiodes work really, really well. The, I'm using basically a uh, controller. Um, this is a dual serial motor controller. Uh, and Polulu, I think it's how it's pronounced. There's a lot of stuff on their website that tells you how you can actually implement this into. And then that little blue thing right behind the uh, motor controller board, that's a 3D printed um, retainer, so to speak. So if it hits something, it can just push up. That's what actually holds my switch. And that's how I can adjust the up and down to it as well. So, um, and the board on the right, that's just basically how I parallel the, the motors together. So it's a simple one then too. This is a switch on the bottom. This is a Runt Rover by Acrobotics here. Basically, that's my use for my, my chassis. It's articulating quite nice. I like this a lot. Uh, the switch itself is actually is uh, articulating. I put it on a hinge there. And that white plastic sort of covering it, that's nothing more than a milk jug uh, spring. So if it gets, it, it can push itself out of the way, but it'll kind of push itself back again too, because I had trouble of it being lifted up out of the way and staying there. So this actually pushes it back then too. But, uh, yeah, this is the view from the other side. Um, I, I did this because of, you know, many years ago I was weed whipping this thing and I picked up a rock and broke my sliding glass door. And so I figured, well, there's got to be a better way. And like I said, I'm not going to use an herbicide on this thing to spray with all my all the reasons for that. Um, so I thought this was a nice little simple solution. Um, it's, it's, I don't have a Roomba. Maybe this is my patio ba. I don't know. But... Uh, yeah, we'll see. I've been using it now three or four days, and it's really has done pretty pretty good job of um, cleaning this area. I think when I get the bumpers on there, it'll actually, you know, of course, then it then not go side to side, uh, at least uh, farther. It won't be able to go all the way because of the the shield and the and the of course the uh, photovoltaic board in the back then too. But uh, and sometimes you see the cart there is tilted a little bit. Well, that's the articulating bottom, and sometimes that changes the. Um, um, where the sunlight hits because you're raising the whole photo um, fresnel sheet up then too so but again it's 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 um it does occasionally miss but right now it's hitting much more uh than missing so uh yeah it's kind of interesting little project um and but i'm really kind of pleased how well it's working um it just uh, Works and works and works. I set it out there and check in on it two or three hours later. It's, I can kind of keep an eye on it here too. But I think that maybe the, the next thing I probably have to do is a flame sensor. So if it does get a flame, um, <laughs> it's going to run out of the way. So to hide it then too. But uh, yeah. Yeah, see there it just went a little bit too far by it. Still, still it's, it's not an, a focal point. Uh, so even if it doesn't completely, you know, burn it down, it really damages the leaves because it heats them up enough to really sort of uh, suppress the weeds. And that's kind of what I'm after then too. So like I said, if anybody wants the code or artwork, let me know. I can always post this stuff to GitHub then too. So anyway, thanks for watching.